What's going on everybody? Boris here at your College of Design Studio and today we're going to learn how to do a budget spreadsheet. It's going to be a quick video. Uh, before we jump right in, let me show you some of the some of the categories here before we start filling in the formulas. Uh, by the way, this document is available on our website for free so you can download it and work along. Um, with this video, all the all the cells have already been filled in or pre-filled with, uh, with the necessary formulas. Uh, and this has been left blank. This is just some numbers I made up um, for demonstration purposes. So for a date, I would put in something specific, you know, an actual day, month, year. Um, I've just put in regular generic months here. Payment type, I have two types. I have static and float. Static is basically a snapshot. It's a single event. It doesn't happen very often. For example, federal and state tax returns, that those only happen once a year. It's not something that happens on a recurring basis. A paycheck is a float, you know, that happens every month. And uh, vacation and bail money. Uh, we always need some of those. That's on a that's on a daily basis. Got some allowances here for that. Um, so let's get started. Uh, cell O3. That's going to be basically uh, a basic sum formula. Uh, sum E3 through K3, and then that sums up our savings and checking balances. Uh, percent spent. That's going to be a conditional statement. Uh, it's going to be if E3 equals zero comma parentheses dash otherwise e18 divided by e3 and that's going to give us a percentage of the, of the money that's been spent and right now it's zero because we haven't um, finished our calculations uh, i've already pre-filled that same formula here in 04 and what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on the fill handle and drag over to f4 uh, and fill it in here for E5 and F5, E5 um, is going to be equals E3 minus E18 uh, plus, I believe it's G18, yes. And then what I can do, again, since we're using relative cell references, I can click on the field handle and drag over uh, and fill in cell F5. Okay, so what I've done is I've carried over cells I18 and J18 up here um, to make it easier to read. That way you can have a, at a glance uh, overall for your expected incoming revenues and your obligations. And I filled in this cell with these formulas here in um, F5. So let's move down here to our sum columns. It's going to be cells E18 all the way through, I believe, uh, O18. And it's going to be the same formula all the way through K. The formula for 18, O18 is a little different. Um, so let's fill these in real quick. We type equals to begin a formula. Uh, and we're in cell E, so it's going to be sum E8 through, or is it 8? It's E9. Yes, E9 through E17. Or you can do auto sum. Uh, which is up here in the upper right hand corner of your home tab. We press enter and we get a dash because you know, there's nothing here in savings. Um, and then let's click the fill handle and drag all the way through K. We get these uh, subtotals here. In cell 018, uh, type equals to begin a formula. Parentheses E, um, actually, you don't need a parentheses E18 plus F18 plus J18 because we're just summing up all of our expenses here uh, in the red. Red is bad. For revenue, uh, I guess it should be green because, you know, uh, green money, uh, but orange is fine. <laughs> and um, type in I18 plus K18 plus G18 plus H18 because we're summing up all our revenues. Now, uh, the last the last row here says funds available, expected income. That's actually not right, I don't like that. So I'm gonna delete that and just type in uh, leftover um, because that's going to be a very simple calculation. It's going to be this cell, or not this cell, it's going to be equals revenues minus uh, expenditures. So that's that's how much we're left um, with here in this time period. Uh, 
Notice here, it's very different in, uh, in the beginning because th these are the balances we start with. So now it's March and April. Um, well, it's May, but uh, for, the, for the scenario, it's March and April uh, is this time period. And we begin with savings of 400 and checkings of 3,000. And I want to see, I want to be able to know uh, how much of the money I start with um, end up as expenses. So if I if I had no revenues whatsoever, um, you know, if I if I had no income, if I didn't have expected you know federal returns, if I didn't have a paycheck or anything like that in this time period, I want to see how much of my leftover money from the previous uh, period are going to end up in expenses. That way, I know if you know if something happens, um, lay layoffs, um, emergencies, or what have you, I want to know my situation and if I'll be able to. Um, make it with uh, the savings and it looks like uh, yes it's it's possible with an account balance of thirty four hundred dollars um, spendings in this time period March and April is about uh, 77 percent and we're left over with eight hundred dollars that's telling me that with my savings I can survive for about a month again this is just a hypothetical scenario um, <laughs> It, it, it depends on what your your balances are, and I, uh, I urge everyone to have uh, a money market or a savings account with at least a thousand dollars in there, uh, in case of you know rainy weather. But um, I've I've done budget spreadsheets before, and I used to do them um, religiously on a, on a consistent basis, and I've dropped off the wagon. I should probably pick that up back up because it helps you see where you stand and if it's kind of scary at first because you're like oh wow i have a lot of expenses you know a lot of debt uh, and whatnot but that's the only way knowing what you have and what you owe and where you stand is is one of the only ways you can um, make significant changes in your spending habits and improve your um not just fiscal responsibility but your financial situation overall um, so again i hope this has been helpful this document in its entirety uh, filled out is going to be available on our website or collegedesigns.com slash feed. Uh, check it out or download it. Before we leave off here, I'd like to take a look at the second sheet of this uh, workbook. It's basically a simple to-do list. You can color code it or you can number it by order of precedence. It's just items that uh, critically affect your financial situation. You know, federal tax returns, last paycheck, credit score. That one I want to hit on really quick. There's three companies, there's Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, and you can check your uh, credit score report or credit report with them uh, once every year. So the most efficient way is to check every three months with one company and then the next three months with another. And that way you have a quarterly statement um, of your credit situation. Uh, when I did it last time, there were some errors in my report. It was a pain to fix them. You know, it took a while. You have to file paperwork and then wait a long time. But it is worth it because it negatively affects your credit score um, and your financial situation. So it's it's a good thing to do. Um, again, this is not that important. You don't even have to do it. The most important thing is this first document here that provides a snapshot of your financial situation. Uh, that way you know you know where you stand and uh, how long you can last in case of an emergency. Um, so yeah, I hope, I hope this has been helpful. Again, the document's available on our website. Check the links out in the description. If you have any questions or comments, let me know uh, down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on our College Designs production.